you that happened um, last night. And uh, again, I'll just say this at the beginning of this so that if people um, uh, are jumping in, for those of you who are the five, please encourage people to share this as much as you can. Hi, Laura. Um, and uh, just encourage that because uh, I believe it's a very important uh, thing I'm sharing. It's also, I believe, a very important season that we are in. Uh, we have just gone through um, into a new year uh, in the Hebrew calendar, a um, year of open doors. The interesting thing about open doors, you know, Paul talks about, he said, uh, he said, there is waiting an open door of effectual service for me. Um, pray for me. And uh, the reason is, is because he goes on, he doesn't say, but he says, and there are many adversaries. And the truth is, is that when the doors are open, the adversaries increase. Some of us think, oh, the doors are open, so this will be easy. Actually, in fact, the opposite is exactly true. Um, and a lot of people don't like that. You know, we pray for open doors, but then we don't understand that the, the attacks that may come against us are going to be far more formidable than when the doors were shut because we weren't doing anything. We were not intruding on the enemy's territory. But when we begin intruding on the enemy's territory, ah, he doesn't like that. Um, I do not believe that the devil knows what's going to happen. You know, people often say this. They say, oh, you know, I'm going through so much warfare. The enemy knows that he's, that, that something's about to happen. The enemy doesn't know. The enemy knows the Bible. He can read the Bible. He can know that his days are getting shorter, but he doesn't know the might of God. He does not, uh, he's not uh, all-knowing. He's not like God in that regard. Uh, he just simply knows that we have become a threat to him. And when people become a threat to him, uh, he takes it out on them. Last night at uh, 4.04 .04 in the morning, I had, I've only had two of these encounters. Uh, one was literally back in the 80s. Uh, the other one was now. Now, that doesn't mean I don't see things. It just means the kind of encounters are very different. Uh, generally, I'll have encounters with angels or the Lord. Um, but last night at 4.04, .04, I was awakened by noise in my room, and I, I got up and I sat on the side of my bed, and there was a demon uh, that was in my room uh, that I could visibly see, and he was absolutely a demon. And he didn't say anything. He just looked at me like, um, I'm going to take authority, and I have authority here. And I said, you have no authority here. Get out of here. You have no right over any person in this house, and in Jesus' name, you will leave. And I had to actually say that for a few minutes. It was not like an instantaneous he left. But uh, after a few minutes, he left, and uh, I slept like a baby. But the truth is, I was like, Lord, what is, what is, what's going on? What's happening? And I, I want to just share with you that we are stepping into one of the most profound seasons. But who we are and who we represent ourselves as is going to be very important in the coming days. Very important. Why? Well, I have to ask the question, do people hear the voice of the Son of God through you, or do they hear your voice? And I, I'm going at this point in time. If you go to John chapter five, I'm gonna. I'm, it's, it's gonna be a little bit of a Bible study today because I, it just it hit me so powerfully today as I was as I was reading this. You know, um, Jesus in verse seventeen. I mean, he's he's already he's he's done the. Uh, the changing of water into wine. He, he's, he's already healed, um, uh, the official son by simply declaring something. Um, it was, it was very powerful. Uh, he'd already healed, um, by invitation to wholeness. Do you know you can heal by inv inviting people to be whole? You can say, do you want to be well? And literally healing will occur in there if you're speaking as the son of God would speak. And, and that's a very different thing. So, we go on, and and um, in chapter 5, verse 17, um, Jesus says this, My father is still working, and I am working also. Um, this is when the Jews were trying to condemn him. In verse 19, he says, I tell you the truth, the son is not able to do anything of his own, 
or on his own, but only what he sees the Father doing. Now, we've used this passage many times. Christians have used it for, you know, um, uh, for divine appointments. And they've said, yeah, you can only do what you see the Father doing. But it's very interesting that my Father is still working. And actually, in other translations, it says my Father is always working and is even working in this hour. And so the reality um, uh of what is occurring in this situation is that he's saying, yeah, I got, I work with my father. I work, I work, I work. Uh, for whatever the father does, the son uh, likewise does those things. In other words, you're walking in tandem with the father is what Jesus is saying. For the father loves the son. This is a key to understanding why the father shows things. It's knowing the love of God, knowing that God really loves you. Knowing that, of course, he hears my prayers. I'm his son. I'm his daughter. Of course, he hears me. I love what Jesus says where he says, Father, thank you that you always hear my prayers. Some people are, are worried they don't, they don't get heard because they don't know that the Father loves them. They, they're, they're not embraced by him. They're, they're still trying to perform. They're trying to um, cause him to notice them. And, and, and it, it's a real orphan spirit that they're carrying. They're carrying this spirit on them that, that it's like, well, if I've got to impress God in order to walk with God. But that's not at all what Jesus is saying here. He's saying, my Father, the Father loves the Son, shows him everything he's doing. It's it's like the father the father wants to show you everything he's doing, not just one little thing, not just one thing on occasion, not just giving you a word of knowledge in a meeting, not just giving a prophetic word over a person once in a while, not not just having an an encounter in worship. He wants this for you twenty four seven. The father wants to show you. It's kind of like come over here. I want I want I want to show you some things. Can can you just look at this? I, I want to show you what I'm doing. I want, I want to show you what I'm doing all the time. I'm always working. I'm always working. Uh, and he shows him everything that he's doing, and he will show him greater works than these um, so that he'll you will be amazed. That literally God will show Jesus greater things. Why? So that people will be amazed. By what? By the works of the Father. By the works of Jesus. And just as the Father raises the dead and gives them life, so the Son also gives life to whom he wants. Uh, is Jesus in you? Is he on you? Is he running through you? Do you give life, not in your name, but in his name, to everything? Does everything around you live because God is speaking through you? I mean, this is amazing. This part is crazy amazing. Listen. Just as the Father raises the dead and gives them life, so the Son also gives life to whom he wants. When was the last time you thought, God, because you are in me, because I follow you, because you show me your secret, you're going to give life to everyone that I want. I think this is where resurrection begins happening. I think this is obviously where, where healings begin happening. It's an amazing thing when you begin realizing, wait, 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 We're, people are trying to do the works of Jesus. They want signs and wonders in their life. They're looking for those things, but they're missing the point because the point is never us. The point is never about what we do. Never. It is never. It, the, the reality is you don't want your works to be good. You want the work of the Holy Spirit to be through you. You want to be the work of Jesus being manifest and magnified and glorified. You want him to be noticed, not you. You know, and uh, I'm going to come back to this passage, but they said uh, in, in Revelation 12, 11, people will always say this. They overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. They didn't love their lives so much as to shrink from death. I can tell you who told their testimony. It wasn't them. Mm. What do you mean it wasn't them? Well, you can look back through m martyrdom through history and you can realize the ones who spoke of the martyrs and the godliness in their life were not the martyrs. <laughs> we have this pride thing associated with our testimonies. I, I, I'll be honest. I mean, you know, I, I didn't want to tell uh, Heidi Baker stories or Surprise Satoli stories or, or Reiner Bonkis stories. I wanted to have those stories. I wanted them to be my stories. That was faulty. 
in my theology. Why? Because it's not about my testimony. It's not about what I do and what, where people can see me. It's about what Jesus does through my life. It's about him who works. It is the works of Jesus that we do. It's not the works of Danny because he's empowered by Jesus. It's got to be the works of the Holy Spirit through us. The Father, in fact, judges no one but, this is verse 22 of chapter 5, judges no one but has given all judgment to the Son, so that all people may honor the Son just as they honor the Father. Anyone who does not honor the Son doesn't honor the Father who sent him. Truly, I tell you, anyone who hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life will not come under judgment, but has passed from death to life. Truly, I tell you, the hour is coming. Now, listen, this is the verse. This is the title. This is what I was saying to you. Truly, I tell you, an hour is coming and is now here. Jesus was speaking that obviously of his own time, but I believe he was speaking it about this time, the time that we are walking in, where we are not walking according to our own flesh. Those who walk by the Spirit will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Those who are in the Spirit are a part of this grand body of Christ, where it says that all the fullness of the mystery of Christ is dwell, is, is in this, in the body of Christ, and that there's something that God's doing with all of us, that, that we carry uh, a piece of this to the whole world. But he goes on and he says, I tell you, anyone who hears my word, believes in me, has sent me, has eternal life. Verse 25, did truly I tell you an hour is coming and is now here when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. Is the Son of God speaking through you? Are the words that you're using his words and not your words? Are you cultivating disciples after Jesus or after you? Are you creating a movement that looks like you and looks like people around you and it's associated with you? Or does it look like Jesus? I remember, you know, back in, it was in 1995, uh, I was on a sabbatical and I remember going to the church I'd planted. I went twice, but on one occasion, I'll never forget, as I'm sitting there in this meeting and I'd, I'd pastored it for about 11 years at that point, something like that, 10, 11 years. And at that point, and I realized as I'm sitting there, this thing looked like me. It didn't look like Jesus. It looked like, sounded like, acted like me. And I realized, my God, I've made disciples in a horrible way. I'm not saying anybody was wrong who was there. I'm saying what I did was I demonstrated something that was so different than what Jesus and who Jesus is. So different. And he says, when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, those who hear will live. For just as the Father has life in himself, so also he's granted to the Son to have life in himself. And guess what? Jesus gave us that life to flow through us. He's granted him the right to pass judgment because he's the son of man. Do not amazed at this because a time is coming when all who are in the graves will hear his voice. Are you speaking his voice and will come out? Those who've done good things to the resurrection of life, but those who've done wicked things to the resurrection of condemnation. I can do nothing on my own. I judge only as I hear and my judgment is just because I do not seek my own will, but the will of him who sent me. Listen to this part. This is crazy. This is what Jesus says about himself, about himself. The Son of God says this about himself. How much more should we understand this? Verse 31, chapter 5. If I testify about myself, my testimony is not true. <laughs> I got a testimony. I want to tell you what God's done through my life. Really? Really? If I test about my, myself, my testimony is not true. There is another who testifies about me, and I know that testimony about me is true. You sent messengers to John, and he testified to the truth, and he goes on and he talks about the works, and he says, we're going to do greater works. It's a phenomenal passage. Look at verse 41. I do not accept glory from people. 
But I know you, that you have no love for God within you. I've come in my father's name, and yet you don't accept me. If someone else comes in his own name, you will accept him. Oh, he's speaking to the Pharisees, to the scribes. He's saying, if people come in their own name, you're going to accept them. But you won't accept me. Because I don't carry a testimony. I wait for God to give the testimony. What if, what if the stories about our lives were never told by us? What if we didn't have to write an autobiography? What, what if the biographies were written by others? What, what if there were, there were others who would begin to tell the stories of what God did through us? What God did. What God did. That the anointing came onto their lives and they looked like, walked like, talked like Jesus. That the Spirit of God was all over them. That the fire of God was flowing through them. What would happen in the world? What would happen to the church if we, if we stopped going after all these very, very proud things where we, I did this, I did this, I spoke to this, I, I saw this and through my life, this, this, this. And we've done it, we've done it to try and muster the um, uh, people into, into following Jesus. That you can do the same things. And we use that verse all the time. The works that I do, you will do also. Well, what about the work that says, I'm not going to honor myself. My father will honor me. What about that work? What about if we don't honor ourselves, but that we let the father honor him, that, that it will be others who will tell the stories of what God did. What, what if we see that God himself needs to be glorified through our lives and not us? What if there is something so amazing God wants to do through our lives, but he cannot trust us with it because we will take the glory to ourselves? I can tell you that some of the people I know who have accomplished the greatest miracles on the earth that I've ever known do not tell their own stories. They don't, they empty out cholera camps and hospitals and, and I've never heard them tell the story. I, unless I dig, what did God do through you? They raise the dead. They speak in other languages and they're surprised that anybody notices that they did because it wasn't them, it was the Lord. What would happen if Jesus was so glorified that we, we were speaking the very voice of the Son of God that was going to bring life into people, and it was about life coming into people, not our testimony and our reputations? I, you know, Jesus did all these things. He turned water to wine. It was pretty unnoticed. He spoke about the sun, um, the, um, the servant. And he spoke, he declared, they're, they're well right now. He asked the man, do you want to get well? You know, on all three of those occasions, there wasn't a whole lot. He told the disciples, go, go fill this with water. It wasn't like he did anything. He was trying to remain hidden. He would constantly tell people, don't tell anybody what happened. He would feed the 5,000, but he didn't even do that. He told the disciples, you feed them. He pulled everything away from himself because he wanted the Father to receive honor. He walked on water and didn't say, hey, 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 come all do this. He said, don't be afraid, it's me. He healed a man born blind, told them, don't tell, don't tell anybody. And he raised Lazarus from the dead and made himself invisible. Come on, come on. This is Jesus. Who do we think we are? Who do we think we are? Whew. Who do we represent? Do we represent him? In the way that he represented or he re, he presented himself, is that how we present him, or do we re, present him in such a way where we we become something and 
We're stealing pieces of the glory that only belong to him and to the Father. Do others testify about Jesus in you? Hmm. Or do you testify your, about yourself? Because if you testify about yourself, Jesus himself said of himself, if I testify of myself, it's not true. You want to save yourself from exaggeration and foolishness? Don't testify about yourself. If others testify about us, it's truer. But human testimony is not really what we're looking for. We need God to testify about us. There's only one story I can even remember in my own life. One. It had to do with, um, Roland Baker shared this story with me in 2006. The Lord had breathed on mountain of worship and God knows I didn't do it. God did it. It was such a sovereign move. No one, no one could say glory. <laughs> it was where surprise asked, do you know why God's blessing you? And I said, I have no idea. And he said, it's because you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> and so I, I look at that and, and then later on, uh, Roland would call us and he says, Hey, Danny, this has just happened in Africa. There were missionaries who went into the interior of Africa and there were people on the interior of Africa who were asking if, if these missionaries had ever been to mountain of worship. <laughs> no one told them. God told them. God was testifying about something. May it always be like that. May it always be like that. May it be like that in our lives. <sighs> Paul says in Galatians 1.10, he says, Am I now trying to win the approval of men or of God? Or am I trying to please men? If I were still trying to please men, I would not be a servant of Christ. If you're pleasing men, you're not a servant of Christ. <laughs> That means people can be mad at you. When God says, this, this, is, this is our goal. This is our goal, guys. Ready? When God says, have you considered? And we read two passages, two passages in scripture where, and it's in the same book. It's in the book of Job. It's in Job 1 and Job 2. And where Satan has been roaming around, he says, God says, what you been up to? And he says, I've been trying to create havoc, but yeah. And then he said, um, have you considered Job twice? Twice God brings up the name of Job. Do you know how incredible that is? Do you know I pray? I pray that my God says, have you considered Danny? I pray that, that out of God's own mouth, there's a testimony about my life. I don't need it out of the, out of the voices of, of, of people and the accolades of men and women. I do not need it out of people who say, will you father me? I do not need it from those. I don't need the accolades of people. I do not need people to write things about me. I don't need them to try and flatter me. I am unflatterable because he is so amazing and awesome. And if you compare anything in my life to him, there is nothing in Danny that is good. He is good. Wow. Have you considered? Put your name there. Have you asked God? Lord, would you consider me? 
Would you consider me one of those that will keep loving you regardless of what comes your way? Will you consider me one of those who who just simply just wants you glorified and your name honored? And at the end of days, Lord, that that the most important thing is, is that your name is glorified and honored and that, Lord, the accolades of men mean nothing. Lord, would you would you raise up in my life so much? The voice of the Son of God, that people hear the voice of the Son of God and not the voice of Danny. Lord, would you release something that releases life to people so they honor God and they don't honor a man? Father, will you do something beyond, beyond the scope of my ability and all the teaching and all the YouTubes and all the, the trainers and equippers and, and all the teaching that's out there? Lord, would you raise up something that looks like God? And I don't mind if you use me and I get no credit. I don't care, God. I want you to have all the honor, all the glory, and all the blessing. Lord God, right now, on every person watching, I'm asking God right now for an incredible takeover by the Spirit of God, a takeover, a release of your glory on their lives to such a to such a point where they recognize they are nothing, but you are everything. That Lord, that the works of Jesus, the works of God, will dis- be displayed through them to such an exaggerated place of your glory and kingdom, they could never claim it for themselves. That Lord, our testimony is really wanting, it is lacking. But your testimony, Lord, it is true. It is true. Who you are is everything. God, who you are, Father God, who you are is amazing. And Lord, we want that in our lives more than anything. And I ask God today that you release, Lord, an anointing to go lower, an anointing to become invisible, an anointing to go hidden, an anointing, Lord, to stay away from stealing anything from you. That the stories are not our stories, they're the stories of Jesus. They're the stories of the Holy Spirit, Lord, throughout all the ages, the things that you have done, Lord. The acts, the acts are not the acts of the apostles, it's the acts of the Holy Spirit in the working of the early church. Lord, I ask for the acts of God in our generation. In our generation, Lord, make those things known. Revive us to the place, Lord, where all we want is to simply follow. Revive us to the simplicity of what it means to follow God with our whole heart, our whole mind, our whole soul, every bit of our emotions that we follow you. Let that be, let that be the place we want, Lord. Today, Lord, we consecrate ourselves to you. We give it over to you that you can do whatever you want with our lives. That, Lord, make our lives yours. That the testimonies that come out of our lives are not ours. They're yours. Lord, it's the blood of the Lamb. And it's the word of the testimony of the King. It's the testimony of the King. It's the blood of the Lamb, and it's the testimony of the Lamb. I love you, Lord. I bless you. In Jesus' name, amen.